Hi, I'm Dr. Holly Korsendorfer, a physical therapist and certified wound specialist, serving as the Vice President of Business and Clinical Development at Dermorite Industries. As you may know, venous leg ulcers are the most common lower extremity wound and occur more frequently with advancing age. So understanding their mechanisms of cause is important given our aging demographics. Therefore, I'm glad you're participating today to learn more about venous insufficiency pathophysiology and the assessment of venous leg ulcers. After this presentation, you should be able to recall the pathophysiology of venous insufficiency and theories for venous ulceration, recognize classification systems for chronic venous disease, and describe the components for a thorough assessment of a patient with a venous leg ulcer. Chronic venous disease is the most common vascular disorder of the lower extremities, encompassing the full spectrum of venous abnormalities. Chronic venous insufficiency, or CVI, is a term indicating a greater severity of venous disease that includes changes in the skin. CVI is a condition of the lower extremities with venous hypertension, which causes pain, edema, and skin changes such as hemosiderin staining or discoloration of the lower leg, varicosities, and eventually venous ulcers. Venous ulcers are the most common and costly ulcer of the lower extremity, comprising up to 90% of all leg wounds. A majority of venous ulcers last approximately one year and have recurrence rates ranging from 60 to 90%. To better understand the pathology behind this, let's first take a look at the normal venous system. In the legs, return blood normally flows via the three major components of the venous system, starting at the superficial veins, which include the saphenous veins, to the perforator or communicating veins, which then connect to the deep veins, for example, the tibial, peroneal, popliteal, and femoral veins, through which the blood gets propelled back to the heart. The right side of this diagram depicts the subcutaneous superficial veins, perforating veins, and deep veins in relation to the calf muscles, showing how leg motion helps promote venous return. With ambulation, the veins of the foot are empty proximally during weight bearing. The calf muscle contractions during gait propel blood from the deep veins into the central circulation. When the calf relaxes, the pressure is decreased, allowing the blood flow from the superficial to the deep veins. The tone of the veins themselves, the calf muscle pump created during walking, and the respiratory pump created during inhalation contribute to the successful venous return. With chronic disease, the fall in venous pressure during ambulation does not occur.